If you have been wondering what the difference is between people pleasing and being a kind and considerate person, I have got you covered. That is what we are going to talk about today because I've actually had this question come in a few times. I did a video all about people pleasing a little while ago that I'll put the link to down in the description. You can go and watch. But then since then, I've had people ask me, well, then what is the difference? How do I know when I'm people pleasing? Because in that video, I talk about why people pleasing is not the best thing for us or for our relationships. So I'm going to talk about the difference today. It's going to clear a bunch of things up and get you moving forward in being more kind and considerate um, without it being laced with people pleasing. If you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second and introduce yourself in the comment section below. If you're back again, it is always good to have you. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to the channel. The button's about right down there. And either way, my name is Julia Christina and I am a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and the creator of my membership community, The Shift Society, that many of you are already in. And you can get some information about that. If you're not in there already with us, uh, get information in the description below. That's where we are taking this work to a much deeper level, being supported and having community and accountability the whole way through. I help heart-centered humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And this people-pleasing thing, it can get in the way of us liking ourselves and our lives quite a bit, actually. So just so we know what we're working with here, I'll give you a brief little overview of what people-pleasing is so that we can make that clear line between people-pleasing and being a kind, generous, and considerate person. So people-pleasing is at sort of this deeper level, people misleading. It is people deceiving. It is doing things that we wouldn't normally do, that maybe we don't even really want to do, but we are doing it to try to control other people's thoughts about us. We are trying to gain their approval, their love, their acceptance, but in these kind of covert ways that aren't actually authentic to who we are. So we're trying to please them because we're trying to control what they think about us. We're trying to get them to approve of us. But at a deeper, even deeper level, we are doing these things, not just to control, try and control their thoughts about us, but in order to try to manage our own thoughts about us. So we are outsourcing our sense of self-worth to other people's thoughts, ideas, and opinions about us because we think that if we can get other people to like us and approve of us, then maybe we can like and approve of ourselves. But the whole bottom falls out of this because often what we are doing when we are people-pleasing are things that are not authentic to who we are. They're not things we actually want to do. They're things we do kind of with this sort of anxious, maybe um, kind of like this, this sort of pushing energy where we're like, we're trying so hard to get someone to like us. We're trying so hard to gain their approval or their acceptance. And it's not authentic to who we are. And so if we do get that approval or acceptance, it's not based on anything that's authentic or genuine. And so it really doesn't even fulfill the, the goal that we had in the first place because they're not actually liking and approving of the authentic us. It's this sort of phony version of us that's doing these things that we normally wouldn't even want to do, that we don't like to do, but that we think that we have to do in order to be accepted or loved. So that's why... It can get complicated. That's why it can get messy. So what does this mean then? Does this mean that you should never do anything that's kind or considerate or giving or generous? Absolutely not. We actually need more people in the world that are doing things that are kind and considerate and giving and generous. But the difference here is really looking at the motivation. If you want to know whether or not you are people pleasing or if you're doing something out of kindness or consideration or generosity, look at your motivation. What are your reasons for doing this thing? Now, if you're not really sure and you're like, well, I don't know, I, I think that I'm giving out of generosity or I don't think that I'm people pleasing when I'm doing this. If you don't know beforehand, you will know 
afterwards. You will know whether or not you are giving out of generosity versus people pleasing based on how you feel afterwards. If you feel resentful afterwards, then it's probably because you felt like you had to do this thing. You felt obligated to do it or you felt guilted into doing it. If you feel bitter afterwards, then it's probably because the person didn't reciprocate the way that you thought that they should. If you feel hurt afterwards, then it's maybe because you didn't get the response that you were hoping to get. It didn't get the person to kind of gush about you or to be extra nice to you afterwards or whatever that was. You went in with an expectation and that expectation for how they were going to respond wasn't met. And so then now you're having thoughts and feelings about that that are leaving you to feel not good. And often when we are people pleasing, it's because we are trying to get something from someone and it's not clean. We're not giving out of love and generosity and wanting to contribute. We are doing it to get something in in return. Now, this isn't to say that you need to have zero expectations from anyone in your life for doing anything kind, considerate, or generous for you, that's not going to be super conducive for having healthy, mutually respectful, mutually loving, mutually considerate relationships. But if you notice yourself having really high expectations of what you think you should get in return when you do something, and as an aside, how you'll know if your expectations are too high is if you're Uh, constantly or very frequently feeling hurt or disappointed or resentful that people aren't giving you what you think they should be giving you, then that's where it's not going to be helpful. Giving should feel good. After you give, it should feel good. And if it doesn't feel good to give, then that's the time to take a step back and ask yourself, what were my reasons for doing this? What were my expectations of reciprocation or response from the other person that is, that were not met, that are now leading to me feeling, like I said, bitter, resentful, angry, hurt. And if that is happening frequently, then chances are you are people pleasing. If you are giving and you enjoy giving and it feels good to give and you really are doing it from this place of love, if you're doing it from this place of wanting to contribute, wanting to connect, wanting to show your love, then that is not people pleasing. But if you, your motivation is to try to get something, even if it's you're trying to get approval or acceptance or trying to earn love, then it's not going to feel good. So again, if your motivation is to try to get something from someone, get approval, get acceptance, trying to get their love, trying to get them to do something for you in return, if you're trying to get something, then chances are it's people pleasing. If your motivation is to want to give something, to give an opportunity to connect, to give an opportunity to contribute, to give love to someone else, then how you feel afterwards is going to probably be pretty good and then you will know that your motivation is coming from wanting to be kind and considerate versus wanting to people please. So there's sort of the rule of thumb. What is my reason for doing this and how do I often feel after I do this? If I like my reason for doing it and I like how I feel afterwards, green light, good to go. If I don't like my reason for doing it, it's coming kind of loaded with these expectations or this kind of anxiety about trying to make sure I get what I'm trying to get 
and then how I feel if I don't get what I'm trying to get, then chances are it's a good opportunity to take a step back and really start to clean up your motivation for doing what you're doing and your expectations for what you think you should get in return. If you are trying to get approval or permission or trying to earn love from somebody else, from anyone else, and that's why you're doing things, and like we said, at a deeper level, it's because you're trying to get them to think certain things about you so that hopefully you can think and believe those things about you, that you're good enough, that you're lovable enough, that you're acceptable enough, that you're worthy enough. Outsourcing that to somebody else more often than not is not going to end well. Building our relationship with ourselves and feeling good about who we are is an inside job that only we can do in and for ourselves if we want it to be solid and secure and last. Developing that foundation for our relationship with ourselves comes with learning to trust ourselves, building trust. Like any healthy, strong relationship, it starts with trust. It's something we don't often think about when it comes to our relationship with ourselves. We're like, I want to love myself. I want to feel good about myself. I want to be confident in who I am. I want to believe in my worthiness. But do you trust yourself? Do you have a sense of self-trust? That is the main foundational piece that you must have before you build up anything else. I have a guide, it's called the Simple Steps to Self-Trust, and that's gonna walk you through step by step how to build self-trust, and then ultimately how from there our relationship with ourselves, our confidence in who we are, how we feel about who we are, and the love that we have for ourselves just flourishes from that foundation of self-trust. You can get that guide, Simple Steps to Self-Trust, in the description below. Also, get on the wait list for the Shift Society so that you are the first to know when we open up registration again, because this is where we are taking this work to a deeper level, undoing the things that have been holding us back, redoing our thoughts and beliefs and perspectives and our emotions so that we can be moving forward, liking ourselves and our lives more every day. You can get more information about that Shift Society in the description below. Let me know. We'd love to hear what your takeaways are, what connected with you. Do you notice yourself people-pleasing? If so, there's no judgment. We don't learn this stuff to judge ourselves. We just learn this stuff so that we can know better, and then if we want to, we can do better, do different, so that we can feel better or feel different. Always good to have you here. And until next time, take good care.